Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel. And welcome back to Zombicide Black Plague Big Game Hunting, Chapter the Sixth. First of all, as usual, a bit of a cock up to sort out. This one was spotted by Log, and what, what, what it was, it was the Old Faithful Orchid's Crossbow. And what did I forget to do? I forgot to reload it, didn't I, like an idiot. So, if you remember Silas's last go, he killed a walker that was here, and then he immediately killed this runner. Well, he couldn't do that, obviously, because he had to reload. So, with his final action, instead of killing the runner, he reloaded. Didn't particularly have to reload, because at the end phase, the crossbow would automatically reload, but let's get in the habit. So, did that, which meant he didn't kill the runner, so when it came up to the zombie activation, the runner would have gone one, two. So he's got the runner on his space now. So there we go, we've fixed that. Right, where is everybody? Just as a bit of a recap. Silas, as we've seen, is down here. We have got Clovis in the bar, where he's got a runner and two walkers. We've got Nelly, Samson and Anne with the fatty in this room. Baldrick, he's on his own in here, and we've got like the necromancer and all these zombies around here. And we've also got another big horde down here threatening good old Silas. Right, so let's get on with it. Let's move into turn the 11th. And here we are at the player phase and our first player is going to be good old Samson yes because we need him to kill this fatty so let's get the dice tower in and obviously he's got a hammer and he's going to attack that fatty and we need a four or better to do two damage a three that isn't good enough second action a six so he manages to do it with his second action kills the fatty put that back and that moves him up to 11 experience he still has two actions so he's going to take one action to step in here and he's going to try and help Clovis out so what he's going to do is swing his hammer again Oh, in fact, no, he isn't. He is going to help Clovis out, but he's not going to do it with his hammer. I've just noticed he, he's he got that sword, hasn't he, that he found. This is a better weapon for Clovis, because exactly the same. Still needs a four. Oh, that's to open doors. Still needs a four plus to hit, but it's two dice. So he gets one extra die compared to the short sword. With his... With Clovis' special ability, he'll be rolling three die. So, we'll give him this sword. As part of giving him that sword, Clovis is going to get rid of his short sword. He's actually going to equip his sword. He's going to give Samson... He's going to give Samson anything. Yeah, he's going to give Samson the axe and the short sword. So, we'll put that with the crossbow and... The axe, short sword, they'll all go into his backpack. And that is the end of Samson's go. Alright, after Samson, we have Silas. And Silas is going to get pretty busy. So let's get down and look at him in the street. And here's Silas in the street. As mentioned, he used his last action last time to reload, not to shoot the runner. So he's going to use his Orcish crossbow as a melee weapon against this runner so he needs a three or better a one that's not oh he gets two dice does get two dice i've just got to roll another dice because it's the office crossbow and he gets a five so he got a one and a five there Oof, nearly did myself out of it so he has killed the runner so that puts him on to 17 
So he gets the XP back that I had to take off him. Okay, his next action is he's going to move. So he's going to move one. The reason for this is he has to get away from these guys. He's got to, he's got to get a bit of breathing space. That means he's got to concentrate on these two fatties. So he is actually going to attack them normally with the crossbow. So he's going to do a ranged attack. He gets two or better. And he gets two twos. So they are good enough to get rid of the two fatties. And that gives him two extra experience, which puts him up to 19. 19 is in the orange. We are now in the orange. So... He gets an extra ability, does Silas. Now, he can either have plus one free ranged action or point blank. I'm just going to check what point blank is. Okay, so let's have a quick read, because I think he is going to take point blank, actually. It sounds pretty good. There it is. The survivor can resolve ranged and magic actions in his own zone, no matter the minimum range. So, in Silas's case, it's ranged. When resolving a ranged action, range zero, the survivor freely chooses the targets and can kill any type of zombies. His combat spells and ranged weapons still need to inflict enough damage to kill his targets. Misses do not hit survivors. So, the main points of point blank are, if he's on the same zone as a load of zombies, he's doing a ranged attack, but he can pick and choose, like melee. So he doesn't have to use ranged targeting priority. And if he misses, he doesn't hit any other survivors in the zone. So he's going to take point blank, I think. That's That seems a pretty good... Especially with the um, crossbow being a melee weapon as well. So it might do as good to get everybody together in the same zone and he'll be able to a swathe of destruction so he's going to take point blank okay so he's killed the runner he's moved a zone for his second action he's killed these guys for his third action for his last action he's going to reload again doesn't really have to do that because he'd be able to reload anyway in the end phase but let's get used to doing it repetition will make me remember Hopefully. Right, that is it for Silas. Next up, it will be Anne. So let's get back in the suite of zombie-filled rooms. And here we are with Anne. First thing Anne's going to do, she's going to use Bloodlust, move up to two zones, then have a free attack. So she's moving one zone, and she's going to attack the runner. So she needs a four or better. Two is not good enough. So, second action, she's going to go again. And she gets a five. So, that is good enough. She kills the runner. And that puts her up to ten experience points. She's still got two actions left. So, she's going to attack one of the walkers. A four. She kills a walker. And her final attack against the final walker. A three, she misses. But not too bad. She's got rid of a few. She's got rid of a few there. And I think she's on to 11 experience now. She killed a runner and a walker. So, good work from Anne. After Anne, it is Baldrick. So we can stay here. There's Baldrick. Baldrick's going to move, is he going to search? Yeah, because he's got, he's got to, essentially he's got two free magic actions. He's got Spellcaster and his free magic action, so he's going to search. And he finds a torch. Put that in his backpack. Then he will move. He's going to move one into here. And... As previously with Silas, he's going to ignore this walker and he's actually going to cast Inferno into here. So it's got range one and he's going to cast it over the head of this walker into this room. So that's four dice. 
Needs four or better. Whoop. Oh, God, one six. That was rubbish. He's missed with all the others. And that was his spellcaster. So with his spell, his free spellcaster magic, he has killed one walker. Which puts him up to 20. His player sheet at the end of last turn did show did show him at 20. It was actually 19, I checked. So he's, he's on 20 now with killing that single walker. He's going to attack exactly the same again with his... Uh, Plus one ranged ma magic action into the same room. Another four dice. And he got two this time. So it kills two. And that puts him up to 22. Okay, I still think he's got I still think he's got quite a few actions left. So search for one. Move for two. Spellcaster, plus free range magic action. So he's got another action. In fact, he's got another two, hasn't he? So let's use the same dice. So again, he's going to target this walker here. And he has four successes this time. We could have done with them at the beginning. But he does kill this final walker in that room. That puts him up to 23. And he's got one action left. What's he going to do with his final action? With his final action, he's going to trade. So he is going to trade the torch. He's going to go to Clovis. Clovis is going to put that in his offhand. And Clovis is going to trade Repulse back to Baldrick. So I think that is it for Baldrick's move. I think I missed a couple of his actions last, last turn, but I think I've got them all this turn. So that's it for Baldrick. And speaking of Clovis, it's now Clovis's go. So he's got this single walker. He's now got the sword. So he's going to use the sword, which is two die. Plus one melee die for his special ability. First action. And he gets the six. That he requires to do one damage. Well, he needed a four to a four, but he kills this last walker. That puts him up to eight experience. And now he's going to search. He's got the torch equipped so he can pick two cards. And there are no zombies in the room anymore. So first card, that's a good find. Chainmail armor. So he's going to equip this straight off. So he saves on a four plus now. And his second card, because he's using the torch, he finds some dragon bile, which will go with the torch he's got. Brilliant. So that is not bad at all. First action kills a zombie. Second, he finds Chainmail and Dragon Bile. Woohoo! So, he's got two actions left. So, what are we going to do? I'm not particularly keen to... Oh, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. He's going to move into here. Normally, I wouldn't do that, but we have got Nelly going next, and she's got quite a few actions. So he's going to move into here, and then his final action he is not going to use. And that is it for Clovis. Next up is Nelly. And I've got a plan. I think Nelly will save us a lot of bother with Silas. So Nelly, her first action is a free move action. So she's still got four actions left. Set her first action then is going to be to move in with Clovis. Then she's going to trade. How is she going to trade with Clovis? She is... Oh no, she's not going to trade with Clovis. Or is she? Uh, no, no she isn't. What she's going to do is she's going to rearrange her stuff. 
So she's going to put the short sword and the axe into her backpack and she's going to equip her torch and her dragon bile that she's got. I was thinking of trading for Clovis's dragon bile and torch but no need to bother because Nelly's already got it. So Nelly is now holding the dragon bile and the torch for a third action You've guessed it, the dragon bile is going in here. So let's discard that. And put it on the reds, save moving all the models. So she's chucked the dragon bile into that mass of zombies and the necromancer. And for a final action, that's right, she's chucking the torch in the middle of the lot. Boom. So there we go, the old lot goes up in flames, that is one, two, three walkers, three experience points, three fatties, putting up to six experience points, this necromancer putting it up to seven experience points, and we get rid of the necromancer spawn point which is cool as well so boom baby seven experience points that puts her up to 20 so she's also now in the orange and she's gonna pick bloodlust melee which is exactly the same as and starting ability so you can move up to two zones and get a free melee attack that's the extra ability that she has picked Good, 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 good. That is, that is really helped out Silas, who's down here. So that was Nelly. She was our final player. So let's move on to the zombie phase. And here we are at the zombie phase. So let's do the activations. Fatty moves one. This fatty moves one. All the, these two walkers. And that fatty move there. These walkers and fatties move one as well. So that is the zombie activations. So we've now got to do the spawns. So at the top we get, and we're in the orange now remember, we get two runners. So let's dig those out. There we go two runners next up we have the spawn point here another two runners so one two and for the final spawn point here at the bottom four walkers so i think that's four runners and four walkers we ended up with what am i putting runners on for Four walkers, one, two, three, four. All right, not too bad, not too bad. So that is the end of the zombie phase. Let's move on to the end phase. And here we are at the end phase. Normally we take noise tokens off, and we should be taking noise tokens off, because, yes, I think we had... Did he cast it three times? I think Baldrick casted Inferno three times, so there should be three noise tokens here to take off. Uh, it doesn't really matter. They, they were obviously the noisiest, but that's another thing I've got to get in the habit of doing. So taking the noise tokens off for where Baldrick was casting Inferno. Now we've got to move the first player token, so let's move it down to Silas. Silas is going to go first. And that's it for the end phase. And that's it for turn 11. So let's move straight on and get into turn the 12th. And here we are at the player phase. Focused in a bit on Silas, he's our first player. 
what's he going to do? Well, he's got a reloaded crossbow, but I think let's get him in here with these guys. Let's get all our survivors together. So his first action, he's going to move here. His second action, he's going to move in here. And then he is going to shoot. So he's got point blank anyway, but there's only this single fatty in here. So it needs a two or better. And he gets a six, which is good enough. So he kills the fatty. And gets another experience point, which puts him up to 20. Then what he's going to do is he's going to reload. So again, doesn't really have to bother, but he is going to reload. So I know it's loaded up for the start of next turn. That is it for Silas's movement and his turn. Next up after him is Anne. Anne is going to go one, two. She's going to pick up this objective for five experience points. For a third action, that is going to put her up to 16 XP. And for a final and fourth action, she is going to search. And she finds a hammer. Oh, she can get... If she gives this to Samson, Samson will be able to dual-wield hammers because they are exactly the same weapon. So, she'll put that in a backpack. And that is it for Anne's go. After Anne, it is Baldrick. Baldrick's here. So he's going to go one, two. And I think he's going to stay there. And he is going to search. And he finds Fireball. So he's found another spell. So that will go into his final backpack slot. Is there anything else he's going to do with his final action? No, that's it. So let's make a bit of room. Yeah, so he's not going to use his final action. That's fine. And after him... It is Clovis. Clovis is going to move one, two, three into this end room. And with his final action, he's going to pick up this final objective token. And that will put him up 5 XP, which puts him up to 13. Good stuff. And... So that was one, two, three, final action, picked it up. Excellent. After him, it is Nelly. And Nelly's going to move one into here. And she's going to search. And she finds plenty of bolts. She'll put that in a backpack. And then she's going to rearrange her stuff because she's not actually... Uh, Got anything in her hands at the moment after chucking the dragon by her last turn. So she's going to put the short sword. She's going to equip the short sword and the axe. As mentioned, she can't dual wield those. She can't cause damage with both of them. But she, she'll have to pick one because they are not the same weapon. But by having the axe in her hand, it does mean she doesn't have to swap out to bash doors in. Right, so she's moved one. She's... Um, searched one and she has transferred stuff she's going to leave it at that she's not going to use uh, her last action or her free mo movement action for that for that matter um, we're just getting ready to get the hell out next up is samson and what samson's going to do is he is going to go one two and then he's going to trade with Anne because anne has got that hammer so she gives the hammer to Samson. Samson puts the hand crossbow. He's going to trade. He's going to trade the hand crossbow back to Anne, I think. Then she's got a ranged option. He's just going to dual wield hammers because he's a dwarf and it'll just look so cool. And has, can he search? He can, I think. So he moved one, two traded now he's going to search and 
and he finds a great sword he'll just put that in his backpack and that is it for Samson's go he was the last player so that's the end of the player phase so let's move to the zombie phase and here we are at the zombie phase so let's do our activations Fatty moves one gets joined by these two runners who move two these two runners move two so they're getting ready to sprint in obviously all the noise has been round here so these guys are moving in this direction these six come in here And these four move up one then we've got spawns so top spawn it's two runners again getting a lot of runners aren't we fortunately we've still got some models left we don't want them activating again and spawn another oh bloody necromancer necromancer down here damn so we've got a necromancer there with its spawn point so it is like a double spawn here he's got five walkers with him no that's one two three four five so those guys have come from nowhere haven't they and our final spawn is down at the bottom and we get two fatties right yes done that right two fatties at the bottom there we go so that's the end of the zombie phase let's move on to the end phase and here we are at the end phase now I don't think I didn't cast Inferno there was no um, there was no extraneous noise so not putting the noise token out was done correctly this turn i think now we have won to all intents and purposes we've now picked up all the objectives we killed the necromancer we killed an abomination yonks ago so we could say we've won but it doesn't look to me like we've won does it to you it looks <laughs> it looks like we're about to be rushed by a load of zombies so what i'm going to do is we're going to try to finish the mission by actually getting off the board so i think that makes thematic sense we've achieved all our objectives but we're still pretty much surrounded by zombies so we're going to try and get off the board but we're going to try and get off the board next time so i'm not doing an azathoth like i did with eldritch horror i'm thinking all oh, right up we're going to finish because that way i can guarantee i'd probably be here another hour so what we'll do is we'll end it here so we've done two turns like we normally do we've achieved all the objectives and everything we've just now got to escape this board and all these zombies so if we can get to one of these exit points then we will and uh, get each model off the board then we will have won let's do it that way okay so that is the end of chapter the sixth of zombicide black plague big game hunting i hope you enjoyed it um thank you very much for watching thanks very much for all the views thanks very much for all the subscriptions for all the tips for all the comments and for pointing out where i go wrong like not reloading that bloody crossbow so if there's any others that you've spotted in this episode please please flag them up and i will do my best to correct them before the next turn which will probably be the final turn so as i say that is the end for chapter the sixth i hope you join me for chapter the seventh of zombicide black play big game hunting but until then this is me cat weasel signing off to blue.